Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, whatever it is for you. I'm Cyclone. Welcome to Let's Play Train Simulator. As you can see, I'm on the standard tab today, and uh, since I've been doing the suburban Glasgow Northwest lately, which is what you see featured on the screen here, you might be thinking, or might be saying to me rather, Cyclone, there are no standard scenarios that come with suburban Glasgow Northwest. To that I say, you're absolutely correct. What we have here today is a workshop scenario that I actually provide some research for, and I actually suggested some of the ideas behind this particular workshop scenario. And because I was involved with some of the ideas behind it, I wanna actually show off this scenario as part of my uh, project on the Suburban Glasgow route. Now, Rivet Games does have a scenario pack exclusive to their site where they show off this scenario. It's called After the Storm. They show off the scenario on, uh, the, the, the scenario I'm doing is called After the Storm, sorry. The uh, pack on the Rivet Games site has one from Exhibition Center which is a Christmas theme scenario. I've asked if they want me to um, promote that. I haven't heard back from them yet on that, so I don't know if they're gonna want me to promote the pack with that or not. It is the only state scenario I think they have that uses Exhibition Center in all 10 scenarios that they've created. But because I don't expect to have access to that scenario, I don't think they're gonna want, I just have a feeling because I'm still not unknown, I'm still not a known person like PTG Rail and some other people out there, I probably am not gonna get access to that. So I figured the best thing I can do is take a scenario from the workshop that features Exhibition Center. Uh, Green Dragon 32 is a creative scenario. It creates a lot of scenarios and very heavily praised for the content that is produced. It has over 500 scenarios in the workshop. Go check out Green Dragon 32. Definitely someone to uh, take a look at. And uh, this particular scenario, I actually show up as a shout out for this because again, I suggest for some of the ideas in this. Uh, the research behind the scenario, there's a version that uses the 380. I'm gonna be using the 320, obviously. Uh, I'm going to look at the 380 version at a later time. The 380 version is going to be utilized when we, when the um, once I get Glasgow Airport Rail, they can actually start exploring that route. I will make a special visit over here to suburban Glasgow Northwest and take a look at the 380 version of the scenario. It's actually four minutes longer because the consoles can't keep up as well, apparently. But I will take a look at that at a later time. I do have some notes on Exhibition Center, and I'm not going to, because there's going to be a lot of reds in this scenario, which I'm going to talk about as we go, I'm not going to work so try so much to give you information what's going on in terms of landmarks or features on the route. I will, however, give you information on Exhibition Center because that's this is the only time we're going to probably see it in the entire time we're doing this. So I will give you that information. Let's go ahead and get into the scenario and I will start telling you about Exhibition Center Station. See you inside. Hello driver, after a night of bad storms, or yeah, bad storms, rail services throughout the area have been severely disrupted. Your Lark Hill to Dalmer train via singer by the way has stopped at the exhibition center please allow passengers to board before you continue check whoops so we do have a yellow signal to start off the scenario and that means that the signal at 25 the 0.25 away as you can see a quarter of a mile away that is currently a red signal that signal will show that we are uh, unable to proceed so we have to make sure we drive with that in mind as we leave the station Normally you would use a driver reminder appliance to remind you something like this, but I can see the yellow signal, so I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, keep that under account. And if it changes, we're good to go. Now I did give a practice run of this scenario and I did have a failure at one of my stops. So this is actually a uh, bit of a uh, challenge, getting where you need to be on time to allow the AI services to do what they need to do. So uh, you want to make sure you meet the timetable, and those timetable stops are 10.49 at Westerton, uh, 11, or sorry, 10.58 at Dalmer, and then getting into Dalmer the other way at 11.03. And after that, you have to get to Jordan Hill by 11.14, so it's actually four stops that we're going to be doing. I need to put through the AWS self-tests, which uh, typically you wouldn't do that as a train that's already in the station but uh, on a regular run from Lark Hill, but because this is the start of the scenario, we have to do the AWS self-test. Our reverser was not set for us already when we came in. And perhaps it is normal to uh, take the reverser and, and uh, take it to zero at the stops. I, I have the brakes on anyway, so I just leave the reverser on. So that's the thinnest inside of your scene here. Talking about uh, Exhibition Center, it opened in 1894. There's our red signal, by the way. It opened in 1894 as Stob Cross Station, but closed in 1959 with line closure in 1964. It reopened as Finiston when the Argyle Line opened in 1979, 
connecting Patrick and Ruther Glen stations. And Ruther Glen is on WCML North, which is an existing DLC. It was renamed again in 1986. Nearly 2 million passengers use the station annually. I'm going to go ahead and break it and properly slow down for the signal. We are going to see a train coming up ahead, so I actually don't mind doing this. That train is that train coming in to, finish, to Exhibition Center is the reason we're waiting for a red signal. I can pull up a little more. I'm going to pull up just a little more. So the Finiston sidings that we just saw there, just to talk about those Finiston sidings a little bit as I bring the train to a stop again. In, uh, on Monday, September 3rd, 2007, a set of empty coaches was derailed after leaving the sidings for the 838 service from Anderson to Motherwell. Anderson is just behind us at Exhibition. Motherwell, again, is on WCML North. Two staff members were injured and the line between Patrick and Ruther Glen, this one that was opened in 1979, closed for two days. So there were some terminated some restricted services there. There's the train coming in. So in December 1994, heavy rain caused the River Kelvin to actually burst. And that was another closure because uh, the Argyle Line was flooded when the disused Glasgow Central Railway Tunnel was, uh, there's our yellow signal, was flooded. And that caused the Argyle Line to flood. We have a single yellow, so we're going to go carefully for expecting another red signal up ahead. So class 314 units 3, uh, 31428 and 314212 were actually both heavily damaged when they were trapped at Glasgow Central's low-level station. That is two stations behind Exhibition Center, where we uh, started. I'm going a little bit too fast for the signal, so I've taken the uh, throttle off. We are coming out of the Finiston, or we're going to be going through the Finiston West Junction down in a moment. This is the path to Finiston Station 1, Platform 1, that we are seeing. I did not mean to keep the throttle on there. I'm going to put the brakes on just to be safe. And now I'll take them off until I can see the signal. I'm actually going to go back to, up to 20, because 20 is where I want to be. So I think the signal is red when we first see it, and I think it's going to change to yellow as we approach. We have to be at uh, Westerton by 1049. So naturally, we're going to be expecting these signals to clear as we go. There's a nice highway, by the way, on the left. I like how the highway looks in the game with the cars going down, as long as they're not teleporting, which is not realistic. Teleport spot should be off the road. So we do have a red signal. I came in this a little too quickly, so I'm going to go ahead and slow down, but I'm not going to come to a complete stop yet. I'm going to just coast it about, there's a the yellow. <laughs> speed on. Putting up the speed. That clears us into Patrick Station, which is uh, where the next red signal is currently located. So I am going to maintain enough speed to get to Patrick, but I am going to slow down before the station because if we come in faster than 12, we are going to get put onto an emergency brake. And I do not want to do that. Because we may not fully make it to the station before we come to a complete stop. So I'm going to put the brakes on a little bit now just to maintain our speed a little bit. Two tenths of a mile out. I'll put the brakes back on again about a tenth of a mile out. And I will adjust as needed. All right. Brakes, please. Thank you. In fact, I need going to pump them up right now just to be safe. And now I will coast in because we are under the 12. In fact, I'm going to try to keep it around 12. So we can coast in now, assuming the light is red. We do have a yellow, so I am going to speed a little bit further into the station. And then I will come to a stop at the end of the yellow light here. That's where we're going to stop. And there we go. Arrival at Patrick Station, Platform 2. Nice view of Patrick Station and the neighborhood surrounding. This station replaced the Patrick Hall Station, which we're going to talk about up ahead. 
because I always talk about it when it comes to sightings. Brakes off completely, please. And speed on. I'm going to use P4 throttle for now because we do have a double yellow signal. So the next signal I know is yellow. If we still have a single yellow at that signal as we pass it, I will manage the speed a little more carefully because we know there's a red signal before a Heinlein. But we are going to eventually clear it into Heinlein, so it shouldn't be there for too long. I've taken the throttle off, staying at 40 mile per hour limit. I'm at about 34 right now. I think we have a double yellow ahead, so I am good for the next station at this point. Yep, I am cleared into Highland Platform 2, and the signal is beyond the station a little way, so we don't have to worry about stopping before the station or slowing down before the station. I will slow down, I'll start to slow down when we get to just in range of that signal, that yellow signal that's up ahead. That, that's the Patrick Hill siding, by the way. I think you saw a train in that siding, so it looks like the disruptive schedule will put that train off the road for a moment. Maybe it actually got damaged by the storm, I don't know. We don't know that part of the story. We do have a double yellow, so we are good for uh, continuing beyond into the 30 limit as well. That's the junction we're going to be taking. Step two brakes are temporarily on, so I can slow down in time. I'm going to take him back off and coast into the station. And after I'm in a little ways in, I'll come to a complete stop. All right, here we go. Step one. Step two. And full service. And I came to a six car stop position, which I should have stopped a little further back, it looks like. I'll take it. So I'm gonna take the brakes back down. I should have taken the gas off, actually. I did not realize the throttle was still on P1. Oops. But it looks like we didn't move, so we are good. Now we are on a zero on some kind of gradient, but I can't see it because the uh, name of the station is over the gradient. Maybe I'm wrong, but uh, either way, we are going to be proceeding out of the station at a speed limit of 40 miles per hour. We're only going to go up to 30 because we do have the junction up ahead. The repeater does indicate, of course, that the signal ahead is not red. It can mean a yellow signal, and I think we do have a double yellow. Assuming that it clears at the same pace we've been seeing so far, it should be a double yellow when we get there. We're not going to go past 30, as I said earlier. So we're going to be see. So that Highland siding, by the way, was to the. Uh, was that? Yeah, that was Highland. We just had Highland siding was to the left, but we didn't. I didn't actually show you that. We'll look at it on the way back. We are coming through the Highland East Junction at this time. That's going to turn us to the right toward Anniesland Station. Again, our arrival time at Westerton is uh, 10.49, I believe, and we also leave the same minute, so uh, we arrive early in that minute, obviously. And that's gonna be what our uh, first timetable stop actually is. Thank you. So that junction signal, as you saw, was a single yellow with the junction indicator, but that does not mean that you're coming to a stop at the next signal. In this case, it would have, but the train got out of our way. It could be a green signal as well. The junction is always going to be a yellow, but you have to assume that it could be a red signal ahead, even if you know it could be a green, because uh, you're just being told to change lanes. 40 is going to be our effective speed limit. I'll gain a little speed so I can get in the station a little quicker. But I don't think I'm going to get all the way up to 40. In fact, I'll take the throttle off now and I will start hitting the brakes in a moment, right now. Okay, let's take him back off so I can coast in, then I'll come to a stop in the station. Okay, now I'm gonna apply the brakes again. And now I'm gonna move it up to a full service application in a moment. I'm now on step two. Back to step one, because it came in a little too slow. In fact, I'm gonna release the brakes. We do have a red coming up here, so we are going to go into full service. It is a yellow now, but it doesn't matter. Because we're going to be stopping here anyway. So there we are on a 1.12 uphill gradient at this time. We're going to be leaving Annie's Lynn Station.
We do have a single yellow, so we have to assume the next signal is red. I believe it actually turns green by the time we get up to the signal as well. We still have five minutes before we have to actually be at Westerton, so we might actually be parked there for a little while. I think we're going to be slightly early, which is fine because it's one of those weird schedule situations. I went ahead and I applied throttle before releasing the brake because we are on an uphill gradient, so I always do that just to be safe. I'm going to bump the speed up because we do have a full, actually no, no, we have a single yellow, so don't bump the speed up too much. I'll take us up to 25 for now because the single, or even 30 would work for now because the signal is still a ways away, 7 tenths of a mile. So I'm going to leave the speed right around here for now and I'll be prepared to slow down before the signal if necessary. Because we're on uphill, I'm going to have to maintain some speed coming through here. Otherwise, we'll just be going too slow. That is the uh, Mary Hill Junction going towards Kelvindale. Kelvindale, of course, is the Mary Hill line, which we did in a previous scenario. That's our cab light. And we are now in the Knightswood Tunnel. I'm trying to maintain around 25 speed. I wanna make sure I know the signal ahead is clear, uh, but I have to maintain some speed getting up to it. I should be able to stop before the signal. We have enough space to stop before the signal. So now we're getting closer to the signal. I wanna, I am gonna be blind in some aspect, but I think that is a yellow now coming up. No, that's a repeater. It says that we're red. So right now it is a red signal. It may change by the time we get around the corner, but for right now we have to assume that it is a red signal. I'll maintain 20 for now. That repeater does help you with these blind signal checks. And as you can see, I think that is a red signal for us. So I'm gonna make sure we come to a slow down but not a stop because again what you want to do with these situations is you want to ride the uh, throttle as far as you can hoping the signal will turn yellow and if it does not then you have to come to a stop but we're going to get as close to the signal as we can this looks like the train we were waiting for here so if we pass that thing you see in the track ahead we are going to be forced to an emergency stop because that is designed to stop you from passing a red signal. Whoops, I actually had to hit the throttle to go up a little more. So I will just inch forward on the throttle. I was expecting it to change, but it has not changed yet. Well, we're gonna hit the brakes here because I don't wanna go backwards. And the screen has changed to show me going backwards. Brilliant. So I'm on step two brakes. I will put the P1 throttle on. Actually, no, I'm not going to do it yet. Bad idea to do it right now. But I will be putting the P1 throttle on before releasing the brakes so I can apply some speed and not go backwards. As you can see on my hub down below. There is the yellow, so we can take the uh, brakes off and go forward. And let's move it into P2 so we can get moving, and then I'll increase in speed. So we are under a single yellow. I don't recall if there's another sig No, the signal is after Westerton platform. So since it's right at the end of the platform, I cannot come in too fast, but I will put some speed on before we get up to the platform and slow down before the platform. This will ensure that we are still on time. So here's the uh, North Junction. The West uh, this is not the Western Junction. This is the Knightswood North Junction. And now I'm going to hit the brakes because I have to assume it's a red signal at the end of the station. And assuming that's a red signal, I want to make sure I'm coming in not faster than uh, I think about 12 miles per hour. Because I believe that is the speed at which it will uh, put me into an emergency brake application. So I have to watch my speed coming in. That's why I'm feathering the brake right now and I'm getting really close. So I'm going to actually put a step, not full service, a step two brake on. And now I'm going to release it. Actually, I'm going to make sure I get to 12. There we go. Now I can just casually coast in. 
And as you can see, it is a red signal. And it just turned yellow, but we should be good for our stop. Full service, please. Thank you. Doors are now open. And we are making our first timetable stop at Western Platform 2. Let's take a look outside again. I don't want to do that. I like giving these outside views every once in a while when I can. Ah, street over there. Beautiful. As you see, I do drive with the HUD. I don't like driving without the HUD. I like to be able to see everything coming up at a glance without having to memorize it. It's not realistic to life, but again, I'm not a realistic train driver, so <laughs> I don't mind. So leaving uh, Western Platform 2 at 55 mile per hour speed limit, we do have a 60 coming up. So we are going to actually punch the power up to 4 and get ourselves up to speed as quickly as we can. Because we, if we go too slowly in this area, like 40 to 50, we will not make our next timetable stop. So we have, to make, we have to get as much speed as we can in this area and slow down within range of the station. So this is where you get some good practice on your uh, slow down timing here. So I'm getting close to 60, but I will take the throttle off now because I don't want to speed. We are on a downhill. A 1.136 gradient we are on. At about 4 tenths of a mile, I'm going to start to slow down. Actually, I'm going to slow down now on a slight gradient change. 1.3 gradient now. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and slow down a little bit now, just so I am a little bit safe. As we get closer, I'll put on a step two brake application. Again, I do apologize for any lag you are seeing. There's nothing I can do about that. The lag, it is a game that was released way back before 2010. Uh, in fact, I want to say 29, 2006 it could have been, but I'm not sure the exact year. I'll take the brakes off, I'm going a little too slowly. So when you have routes that take a lot of assets, they will naturally go slower. When I go to play a route like London to Brighton, I'm not going to have really any problems at all. So, uh, and I have not had any problems with that. We do have a green signal now. That's what that ding means. So we are good to proceed at line speed uh, pretty much from here forward. I'm in step two brakes. So I'll apply full service so we can get ourselves stopped and moving again quicker. Doors are open. Once we're in the platform, I will go ahead and use full service just to make sure we can come to a stop as timely as possible, and that way we don't lose too much time going slowly. For standard scenarios, I feel that is a good procedure. For career scenarios, you might just lose a few points here and there, but for standard scenarios, it makes more sense to um, have to get into the stations as quickly as you can and stop as quickly as you can, because if you miss a stop by one second, you fail the scenario. And on we go to P4 immediately. It is a nice day, so you don't have to worry about uh, the wheels slipping on the line too much here. I'm not going to be getting up to 60 miles per hour by the time we get to Drummery Station. By the way, we have not visited these stations officially in the actual scenarios that come with the pack yet, but the next scenario I'm doing, Washed Out by the Lock, will include these uh, three stations. So I am going to make sure to give you information about these stations in that scenario. So that's why I'm not talking about these three stations right now. I will stop at 53. I don't need to increase beyond that too much. Based on the last station, I'm giving myself a little more time before I start my stop. And that'll be a good time to start, I believe. Coming in nicely, still going 40. We are about a one and a half tenths of a mile away from the platform. I think I'm gonna get in the platform nicely, still going at a good speed here. In fact, I'll take the brakes off for a moment so I can then do a full service application once I'm in the station. And there we go. We do have a, an adverse signal ahead. So I will put the full service on. We should be stopped in time so that we're all completely in the station. There we go. 
The signal just changed to green, so the sunflower doesn't mean anything to us anymore. I think it means we are slightly behind as well, because we should be expecting yellow. So I might not have gotten up to this area quickly enough. Gonna release back to a step one break. And we're gonna get going right away again. We have to be at our next timetable stop, which is Drumry, or no, sorry, Dalmer. We're at Drumry at uh, 10.58. So we got about three minutes to get there. We have to stop at Singer on the way. So again, I'm going to P4 power, power four level, and we're going to get to Singer as quickly as we can. Westerton is another signal away at that point. We still have enough space before the platform. I'm not worried about breaking yet. I can still apply speed. We're about five tenths of a mile away now. I will take the throttle off at this point completely. And again, using our previous stops as experience at high speeds, this is a good time to break. So three tenths of a mile out going around 60 seems to be the butter zone for hitting the brakes for step one. And then just uh, try to coast in from there. Unless you know there's a red signal after the station. Step two now. Thank you. And I can now go full service. And there we go. I think we found the butter zone for the optimum stop here. My best stop of the route so far. Let's take another look outside. One thing I will tell you about the station is the Sing is a Singer sewing machine company you see be operating in this area, and there were a bunch of platforms there. I'll talk about that more in next scenario, but I wanted to give you that little teaser about that information. There is a nice neighborhood here as well. A uh, lot of nice houses on this route. I'm gonna assume they're realistic to the real life houses, but I have no way to know that. I guess I do. I can just look at a Google map and I can find out, but I'm sure it may, it may change over time as well. Throttle on. Brakes off, please. Thank you. Brakes are a little fussy in this, uh, in this train. You have to hold the button down to get the brakes to disengage. So we have a single yellow. I have to operate assuming that these the signal at the end of the platform is red. In fact, I know it will be red because it's the end of our service. So we're not gonna be proceeding past that signal. And that's, that's the realistic way to look at it. Our speed limit is 45 miles per hour. So I am going to go close to that, but not over because I have to slow down before the platform. Close to, but not at, I should say. Obviously I'm not gonna go over. So three tenths of a mile is not a good stopping point here. I'm gonna do it right now because I know I have to stop before the end of the platform because the red is gonna be there. So slowing down a little bit before the platform is optimal at this point. Gonna lower the speed a little bit here, and I am going to get down. I'm going to coast at this point, but uh, after we get to Dalmer uh, Park here, we're, or Dalmer Platform uh, Three, I believe we're doing. Then we're going to go ahead and uh, wait there to see what happens. Let's put the brakes on now, so I don't get an emergency stop triggered. I should be good for my timing at this point. Okay, I'm going to take the brakes off now and coast because I want to still come into the station. 12 is a good speed to coast in. And I will now apply the brakes. Full service application because we are fully within the station. I will punch the doors open. And this is the arrival at Dalmer Station. This is the end of our service on the Argyle Line. But as you can see, there's a lot going on. We're going to be doing more here. 
This is where my idea for the scenario came in because I wanted to, I suggested that it would be a good idea to, if we can find a way to manage it, do a circular run of the route. My suggestion was to look at some disruptions that have occurred. Things like that flooding I told you about in 1994, I believe it was. In 1994 with the class three one, that completes the run to Dalmer. There is an incoming message from dispatch. Please wait for further information on this. Check. Uh, as you can see, I got my tick. So uh, due to the disruption your train will now run the return service via the Yoka route. Pull forwards to stop at Dalmer Park siding. Roger. So we're pulling into the Dalmer Park siding. As you can see straight ahead, we have been given a straight green into the siding. We're gonna have to get down to 15 by the time we get into the siding, but for right now we can go up a little bit above it because our speed limit is gonna be 60. Uh, well, 45 right now, but we're not gonna get up to 45 even. We are gonna go in, into a 60 zone here. But again, we're going into the siding, so we're gonna have to stop in the siding. I can't go too fast because we have 15 to go into there. I'm trying to feather in the 15 to 16 area because that's the, uh, as long as you're within one mile over the speed limit, you're not gonna get dinged. Once you hit 16 exactly, you get, you get marked as speeding. So here we go into the siding right now. We're gonna be stopping in here. It's technically the end of our route. Let's get enough speed to get into the siding. That's the most important part right now. And I'll hit the brakes now. We should be fully into the siding now. Yeah, we're good. So we're gonna have to change cabs here, I believe. There we go. A little fussy on that, uh, on that there. Whoops. Yeah, it moved us into full service because we took the reverser off. Switch cabs, then pull in the Dahmer platform four. I'll bring up this HUD to do that. There we are, we're in the other cab. So back into this. Oops, reverser. AWS self-test is on. And we're now gonna move in on the other side of the train. So we're leaving the siding again at 15 miles per hour. That is our limit in the siding on this junction. But we're gonna clear the siding very quickly, then we can bump our speed up getting into Dalmer platform four. I'm speeding, which was, I hit the same speed a little too quickly there, so uh, that would be a bad situation. Oh well, we'll just let it drop. It's not clear scenario, so we should be okay. And now we can speed up anyway, but we're at the platform, so. I'm gonna coast in, because I'm a little early, I believe. So I'm gonna coast in, and there we go. That'll do. So we're gonna start the return via Yoker. So that was our little turnaround, and this is not, I don't think this is something that's normal on the line. I think this is just something that was added as a disruption point related to the storm. Uh, because of the disruptions, this train, the train for this service was not arriving on time. And this service needed a train because it was also running late. So another train, I guess what's going to happen is another train is going to come from Dumbarton area. And whatever that North Clyde line service is, it's probably going to run that part of the Argyle line to Patrick. I'm going to assume that state, the passengers on that line would get off of Patrick. And they would have to transition from there to whatever other area they need to get to. But I think the idea is to get those passengers at least partway along the route and then transfer them all onto the next train that's available. And they might have another train coming in from Mary Hill Line. We don't know. We don't know what the service is. We don't know what dispatch is doing. Uh, but that's the kind of thing that you can do in this kind of storyline. So uh, we're going to assume that dispatch has something under control to get the return to that particular route handled. We're going to make our way back to Exhibition Center. And again, because we can't go beyond Anderson to Anderson, that's where our scenario is going to end. And I'll say one more fact about the uh, Exhibition Center area before when we get to Patrick, because that's the point at which it's going to make more sense to bring it up. So because of our timetable stop, 
for leaving was 11.04. We are waiting a little bit longer than usual, as you can see. Let's take a look outside quickly, even though we don't have a lot of time. I think we're good to leave. Yeah, we're good to leave. Yeah, we didn't have a lot of time for looking, unfortunately. I was too slow on that. So 40 is our speed limit coming out of Dalmer Platform 4. We are going to move into a 60. So we are going to be coming to the Clyde's Bank Junction. The, uh, and that's to the right. You're going to see a track coming from the Dalmer Riverside. That's what the Clyde's Bank Junction serves. Speed limit is now 60. I don't have the names for these tunnels before the junction. So uh, if someone knows of any name for these tunnels, please go ahead and add it in the comments for anyone who uh, sees this after that. I just don't know those names. Nor can I find information on them. We're getting close to our limit now, so I'm going to go ahead and cut the throttle off completely. And prepare to stop as we're about five tenths of a mile out. We are on a downhill gradient, so that's going to affect our stopping speed. I will now apply a level one brake application. We have greens. I like hearing that ding. And there's that path from the Dahmer Riverside. You see that red signal that just passed on the right? There's the track coming in from the Dahmer Riverside. So this is going to bring us to the Clyde's Bank platforms. And I might have slowed too early because of the uphill, so I'm going to take the brake back off for a moment and coast to the station fast enough that I can still come to a brake on a full service application. So here we go. Step one, step two, and full service. I'm actually going to pull back to step two, and now full service. So I break a little too early for that one because of the uphill gradient, unfortunately. You can't be perfect in everything, and I'm leaving these kinds of mistakes in. So arrival at Clyde's Bank. And Singer is up in that direction over there. Singer is over there, where we just came from. Nice little neighborhood here. Rip. Uh, the, now the people who, the person who built the route, I think Rivet Games actually found this freeware route. It was a fantastic freeware route. There were more elements to it. I'm hoping they get put it into DLC as well. Uh, so I have to give credit not really to Rivet, but to the route designer, uh, who did a great job on this route. I actually wish I had downloaded it when I saw it as a free route because I would have had the entire thing for myself to play. But I wouldn't have had these scenarios. These scenarios are really what make it fun because you get a bunch of things to do. Uh, this one, of course, is a workshop scenario, but those scenarios that come with the route typically give you things to do on the route and make the route that much more fun to play because you have a purpose rather than just driving around aimlessly. So I really like that. And um, and you get the two trains, which didn't originally come with the route either because, again, it was a uh, they were added with the DLC. So we're on a slight downhill. I'm going to hit the brakes now just a little bit to make sure we don't speed into the station too much here. Two tenths of a mile out. I might be slowing a little too, not quickly enough here. I'll take it off and I'll take the chance here. Okay, now I should be on the brakes. I'll now bump it up to a step two application. And once I'm fully within the platform, I will bump it up to a uh, full stop here. Here we go. Actually, they want us up there, so I should probably go up there, but oh well, they're gonna walk. They're walking today. So arrival at Yoker. You are seeing, by the way, the uh, sidings on the uh, left side there. Let's take a quick look over at them, actually. They're going to be coming up on this side. 
There's a whole network of sightings over here that we're going to be seeing as we uh, pass by. There they are right there. We're going to pass those as we pass by, and I'll talk about them as we pass by. So we just went through someone's house there as I showed you the sightings. <laughs> So the first signs we're going to be coming up on are the Yoker Depot departure sightings, 1 to 3, and Yoker Depot west sightings, 1 to 10. Those are the first signs you're going to see. Then we're going to have the through sightings in the middle of that. Then after that are Yoker Depot east, sightings 1 to 12, and the Yoker Depot east shunt. As we pass the east shunt, we're going to get into Garskadden Station. So here's all the sightings over there. For some reason, Windows has decided to pop up a box over my game. I do not appreciate that. I hope it goes away automatically. Yeah, we'll hit the brakes a little bit now. I'll take the brakes back off. And I'm going to actually put them on the back on. I didn't put them back on in time, so I need to really hit them now. Might be a little bit of passenger discomfort here. Apologies to my passengers. Back to a step one. And now I, yeah, the, my box went away, so I didn't have to stop it, thankfully. And the train is now stopped. We're going to open the doors now. Arrival at Garskaden. And again, we'll take a look outside. A few skyscrapers in the area here. And there's the uh, platform on the right that, that goes between the two platforms here. That little bridge. Not platform, but a bridge. And we're good to go. I didn't even notice we were good to go. Oh no, we're not good to go. No, brakes, 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 brakes. That was bad. I did not see that correctly. I, in a real life situation, I would get dinged for that. But again, it's, I don't have a setting on to auto end the scenario. If it was, the scenario would have ended right there. I, for some reason, I did not see the bar was still going. That was a mistake on my part. I got a miscommunication from the uh, platform hand, unfortunately, and I went on that without even thinking to check the lights. I'll make sure not to do that again. We are coming up on the next station, so I need to actually hit the brakes already. This is a quick turnaround to Scott's Town Hills, platform one. I'm probably going to get teased for life now because this is the first route I've done. I'm going to be teased for life now, I'm sure, not to leave a station with the doors open. <laughs> I fully expect people will do that now. So yeah, if you like what you're seeing, especially me moving with the doors open, make sure you hit that like button. And you can subscribe to see more movement of trains with the doors open on more videos because I'm sure it'll happen again because I'm a dum-dum sometimes. It happens. <laughs> oh, I can't believe I did that. You still get the check, though, so it's okay. So uh, we're going to be going to Jordan Hills, our next station. As you can see, four steps from now, Exhibition Center is our last stop. The only remaining timetable stop is at Jordan Hill, the next station. Once we're there, we can take however much time we need. Now we can go. Oh, that was hilariously bad. <laughs> oh, let's hope that I'm on time for the stop at Jordan Hill. This is the last one I need to be on time for. So I'm going to run the speed up to 50 because that's going to be our speed. We are leaving at a 60 limit, but we're not going to get to 60. So we are going to have to cut it. We are going to have to stop at 50, and then we're going to have 40 after the Jordan Hill platform. Throttle off. 
there's another train going by. Let's put the throttle back on again because we lost a little too much speed there. And I'm going to try to just do this st stop as a straight stop. I'm not going to try to shut my way in. I'm going to do a straight stop here because I want to make sure I get in here as quickly as I possibly can. So about three-tenths of a mile out, I will go ahead and hit the brakes. Step one application. That's about now. Actually, I might have been too far out for that speed, so I'll wait a little bit longer to apply it again. Now I'll apply it again. Oh, I'm actually hit the, I'm actually slowing down quite a bit here, so I'm going to just uh, ease off. Now we're going to hit the brakes, for sure. That's the platform now. Full service, we're fully in the platform. Get the doors open quickly so I'm on time. Go. And hopefully I'm not late on that, because if I'm late on that, I fail. <laughs> so I'm watching that uh, marker right now for the checkbox to show up, and if that checkbox shows up, I'm good to finish. I think it'll consider me on time for that because you can be up to a minute late and still be on time. There is the check mark. We are going to finish the scenario. We're good to go. So at this point, we just have to get to the end. So we are going to merge back into the route that we took on the way north. We're now going to be taking the same route to the south. We're going to be stopping at Heinlein again, so this will be our second stop at Heinlein. I told you last scenario about Hermes the Heinlein cat, who has his own Twitter account. He used to live at, he used to live with his own, with his masters in the neighborhood. He used to hang out at the Heinlein station, so he became very well known with the station. The station became synonymous for that cat. And again, that cat no longer lives in the area; it's moved on, but uh, it has a story of its own. So you can check out his Twitter account and uh, see more information about how it, what it thinks. Step one, brake application. We are So again, this is the Heinlein East Junction we just came through. Again, we took the north to Amiesland earlier, so we're going south now. And I'm not too concerned about the rest of the timings of these stops because I don't have a timetable for these next stops. So I'm just gonna go, I, like I'm surprised that uh, the last stop was not timetable to have an end of the service. But I guess um, the whole idea was just to be where you need to be for the AI trains. And if you did the what you needed for the AI trains, you were good to go. So doors are open. Still can't believe I moved on that one. <laughs> I could have probably cut that out quietly and you might not have noticed too much, but yeah, I, mistakes happen. I don't mind showing that mistakes happen. So the Heidland siding was uh, in there in that area as well, the east. So uh, actually, no, I take that back. No, I was saying that wrong. The Patrick Hill siding is on the uh, right now. We're going to see a path into that on the right. I don't know if that train is still going to be in there that we saw earlier, if that train will have moved out. We're going to find out as we pass.
uh, exhibition center station. And all of this you don't get to see unless you come take a look and drive around over here. You don't get to see this normally. So a lot of nice detail on the roads in this area. So we did have a speeding offense, unfortunately. It's going to show up and we, uh, that should, I think that's the only thing. Oh, and the door opening. We're going to see the door open movement as well. Yes, that gets a thumb up. Definitely. I like that scenario. So we got all 18 platforms. We stopped at one destination, which I guess that's just the end destination. And there's the move train once while unloading and the one speeding occurrence. So yeah, it happens. Mistakes happen. You get bad signals and you operate on bad signals. I'm going to blame the station hand for that one. In any case, that's the end of that workshop scenario. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time for Washed Out by the Lock. Again, like the video, subscribe to the channel. I will see you next time for Washed Out by the Lock. I am Cyclone. Have a good day, evening, or night, whatever it is for you at your part of the world. See you next time. Bye-bye.